The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle story of Jesus that is found in all four Gospels. It is clearly central to the earliest Christian community's understanding of who Jesus was and what was so important about his ministry. In Matthew's Gospel story, the story we heard this morning, the scene is very clear. Jesus is tired. He is overwhelmed. In the previous chapter of this gospel, he has learned about the death of his mentor, John the Baptist. And so Jesus decides to go off by himself. Who among us has not had a moment when you just need a break, when you need some quiet time to gather yourself? But all of us have also had the moment when we find ourselves exhausted and in need of a break, only to have the phone ring and learn that there has been an emergency that we must attend to, or a child who wants to share an upsetting day. Just as Jesus gets out of his boat, ready to relax and spend some time in thought and prayer, he was greeted by the crowd. And the gospel tells us he had compassion for them. So he extends himself further than he would have wished, further than he had planned for. He listens to their problems. He cures the sick. He comforts the suffering. And when evening comes, the disciples come and tell Jesus to send them all away so that they can go and buy food for themselves for dinner. David Luce, in an essay about this scripture, says, What we now call food scarcity wasn't only known in the ancient world, it was rampant. And so the disciples' suggestion that these hordes of people go and buy food isn't just unrealistic. There are, after all, out in a deserted place. It's ridiculous and even a little insulting as the folks making up these desperate crowds probably didn't have money to buy food in the first place. And so Jesus tells his disciples to get over their self-concern and feed them themselves. This tiny story is a profound meditation upon scarcity and abundance. Jesus' need for rest and renewal, the disciples' concern for themselves over the needs of the crowds. These are human needs and human reactions to demanding circumstances. I, for one, will never tell you that it's not important to care for yourselves. We all need to take time to renew and refresh ourselves so that we can be our best and most effective selves. Sabbath, after all, is baked into the Judeo-Christian scriptures as essential to a good and holy life. We need to take time to care for ourselves. But the danger is that we can become consumed with our own needs being met and forget our responsibility to others. We do need to take care of our own needs, but we can slip into only focusing on those needs and minimizing the power that we have to help others. Parker Palmer, the great educator, was on his way to a conference when the plane he was on made an unexpectedly long layover. A truck that was supposed to deliver the refreshments for the next leg of the journey had broken down. And finally, after waiting a good long time, the pilot decided that it was more important to get his passengers to their destination than to wait for those snacks to arrive, so he took off. As soon as they were in the air, passengers started grumbling 
A ticket is a contract, one said loudly, and snacks are part of that contract. I ought to sue, another one said. A man stood up and said, I'm a lawyer. How many are willing to join me in a class action suit? It was a minor mutiny in the works. And then something important happened. The flight attendant came on the public address system and she began with those familiar words, ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned off the seatbelt lights. We now have attained a cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. Then she said something quite extraordinary. Having served many on you on the first leg of this flight, I know some of you have, still have your bags of peanuts in your pockets. How many do we have? Please open them and share them with the people around you. I'm sure some of you have pretzels. Would you pass these around also? Those of you with newspapers, you can only read one section at a time. Spread the other sections around for the others to read. Some of you are parents or grandparents. Take out the pictures of your children and grandchildren and show them to others. With that brief announcement, she changed the emotional climate of that flight. Later, when she came near Parker Palmer's seat, he asked her, what's your name? What's the name of your supervisor? I want to write you a letter of commendation. That was the best example of group leadership I have ever seen. To which she replied, the loaves and fishes still work. Again, David Luce writes, Matthew depicts what happens when you move from a worldview of scarcity. We have nothing here but five loaves and fishes to one of abundance. Thank you, God, for these five loaves and fishes. Whatever their initial doubt or skepticism or self-preoccupation, the disciples are caught up in Jesus' words of abundance and gratitude and distribute what they have and participate in the wonder and joy that all ate and were filled. God used even these reluctant disciples, that is, to care for the poor and hungry that God loves so much. And that miracle continues. When a parent puts dreams of an academic career to the side to care for a special needs child, God is working that same kind of miracle. When one student stands up against bullies in defense of another student, the God of compassion is again miraculously revealed. Many of you know about the Christchurch summer camp. It is in its 54th year. This summer, the committee came to the painful decision that it wouldn't be possible to have a traditional camp safely. So energy and time went into planning and staffing an online camp, but only seven children registered. It would have been easy to say, this isn't the year. This is the time to give up. There is no way to make this happen. But instead, we counted our gifts. We had received a grant from Episcopal Charities, after all. We had received donations from people all across the country who know how much our camp affects the life of children in Poughkeepsie. We have the largest green space in downtown Poughkeepsie. We are surrounded by children who haven't had access to in-person academic or enrichment programs in six months. So we offered a fair yesterday in our park, completely free, staffed with talented young people from Poughkeepsie and surrounding towns, filled with t-shirts, and supplies that were built with the donations of all those who gave so generously. 
We offered art and yoga, science experiments, popsicles, juggling, all outside. All children and staff wearing masks. Because when we look at what we have, rather than what we don't have, when we ask God to take our gifts and multiply them, well, that, after all, is the miracle of community. That is the miracle of communion. And that is great God's greatest miracle of all. The one that every gospel writer needed to record. When we have faith to share what we have, God will do the rest, and all shall eat and be satisfied and have popsicles on a warm day in Poughkeepsie, and all shall know that God is all around us and that love emanates from every Christian heart. Amen.